A portion of this video is sponsored by Brilliant. This is an entirely DIY RC plane. I built it to test a propulsion idea that dates all the way back to the 1940s. What I didn't know when I started this project was that it would become one of my most frustrating projects yet. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I designed and built this plane and show you all the challenges I had just trying to get this thing to fly. Most planes that you see have a propeller in the front that pulls them through the air. Others have a propeller in the back which sort of pushes them through the air. But for this plane, we're gonna have both. This idea was actually explored by a company called Dornair back in the 1940s when they built the DO-335. And it proved to be one of the fastest propeller planes ever built. So I wanna see if this actually works on an RC scale as well. To begin making this plane, I created a design and on shape that was easy to build with easy to get materials such as foam and 3D printing. It's great having a design like this before you start building, because then you know the parts are much more likely to fit together. After I had all the parts modeled, I machined the fuselage out of this pink insulation foam on my CNC router. I'll put some information in the description below about this CNC router, it's been awesome. This pink foam machines really well, and it's super cheap and easy to work with. Profile machining parts like this can take a long time. For these fuselages, it took about two hours. But after they were done, I could start cutting the wings. However, instead of using the CNC router for the wings, I instead used my CNC hot wire foam cutter. This hot wire foam cutter has four axes, which allows me to cut wings that have sweep, taper, and twist. Very nice. I built this foam cutter for my last project and I'll probably make a future video on it if you guys are interested. The foam for these wings is called EPP or expanded polypropylene. This stuff is really durable. It almost feels like a mix of foam and rubber. Hopefully this means that if I crash the plane, it's not gonna be completely destroyed. Each wing of this plane is made up of two sections and then they're attached with Gorilla Glue. I also added some carbon spars and this will make the wings a lot more rigid and allow me to attach them to the plane. To allow this airplane to roll, it needs a control surface on each wing, which is moved by a small servo. These control surfaces are just made out of balsa wood and then attached with some small plastic hinges. Now to make the nose and the tail section of this plane, I actually just use 3D printing. I printed these using carbon fiber nylon filament and this stuff is great. It's super strong, durable, and even lightweight. It's about 75% of the density of normal PLA. Next up, I can start installing the motors on the front and the rear of this plane. For this plane, I'm just gonna use 2207 motors, which are the same motors you can find on many FPV quads. With two of these motors on this plane, it should have about three kilograms of thrust. That means this plane will have a thrust to weight ratio of over four, which is pretty ridiculous. Since all of this thrust goes through the motor mounts, they need to be attached really securely. So both the front and the rear motor mounts are both connected with a carbon rod and everything gets glued into the airframe. One really nice thing about machining fuselages like this is you can have all the internal cavities pre-cut so everything just slides right into place. This makes the assembly process really easy. To join both halves of the fuselage, I just used some glue. And once these are together, two servos get installed, which will eventually control the tail. But before the tail can be installed, I need to attach the wings. Since they're already assembled, this is easily done by just sliding them onto the fuselage and adding some glue. I wasn't worried about making the wings removable on this design since the entire wingspan is only about 800 millimeters, which means it's easy to transport even fully assembled. Now, even though this thing was CNC machined, there are still a couple gaps where my design didn't quite line up. This was super easy to fix with just some lightweight body filler though. And once I sanded everything smooth, this thing was ready to go. To make this plane a little less boring, I added some color with some spray paint that's safe for use on foam. I masked off everything except for the underside and painted it a nice flat gray. Once the gray painted dried, I flipped over the plane and painted the rest of it a bright orange color. This color really reminds me of cheddar cheese powder, and I swear looking at it makes me hungry. But on the bright side, it will definitely stand out in the sky. While the paint was drying, I went ahead and started assembling the canopy for this plane. Since this plane is so small and it might be a little hard to see in the sky, I'm going to use FPV to fly it. All the FPV electronics are packed inside this 3D printed canopy. A camera sticks out the front and provides the same view that a pilot would see, and that video is transmitted to my FPV goggles using this VTX. These video transmitters get extremely hot, like hot enough that it'd probably melt the plastic canopy. So I added an air vent to keep it cool. To control the pitch and yaw of this plane, I need some sort of tail. I decided to go with a V-tail configuration, mostly just because I think it looks cool. This is different from the tail that was on the original DO-335, but I think this looks cooler. This tail is also just 3D printed, and I use normal PLA for this. The control surfaces on this V-tail, which are usually called elevons or maybe even tailorons, connect using just some small plastic hinges. And with that, this thing is completely built. With a motor in the front and a motor in the back, this thing looks really cool, it's gonna have a ton of thrust, and hopefully it's really fast. To help me control this plane, I installed a flight controller that's running ArduPilot. This should hopefully make flying this plane a lot easier, especially since I have to hand launch it. Now since this plane has a propeller, which has mass, and it spins, 
One of those pesky Newton's laws tells us it's gonna exert a torque on the plane, trying to make it roll. Normally, the ailerons in the plane would be trimmed to account for this. However, since this plane has a motor in the front and the back, which spin in opposite directions, they actually counteract each other. And this is actually a real benefit for this type of design. And it's why I'm really excited to be teaming up with the sponsor of this video, Brilliant.org. With Brilliant, you get the chance to learn by actually doing. They have thousands of math, data science, programming, physics, and even AI lessons, which are extremely interactive. From my experience, learning by doing examples and seeing visualizations is by far the most effective way to learn. And with Brilliant, learning doesn't have to take you all day. You can incorporate a quick lesson such as learning programming or basic physics into your daily routine, and you will develop real problem-solving skills. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash michaelrecton, or click the link in the description below. And using that same link, you can get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now let's go actually test this plane to see if it flies. Now, as I was setting this thing up to go fly it, I was experimenting with different batteries and realized that it's actually pretty tail heavy. And even if I put a huge battery in the front, it doesn't get any better. Tail heavy planes notoriously do not fly, but at this point, my only option was to either cut the wings off and try to fix it, or just fly it and see what happens. So the next morning, I went out to my local airfield to test it out. Let's put a battery in here. Let's see here, let's try it here. Now, the only issue here is this thing is gonna be horribly tail heavy, which, Typically, it does not end well for planes. However, we're gonna trust RG Pilot to fix all those issues, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> all right, we're gonna try to hand launch this thing. We have launch assist mode, which is good. However, this has a back prop, which makes it a little dangerous to hand launch. So, goal is just get my hand out of the way as soon as possible, and hopefully avoid chopping a finger off. <laughs> all right, we'll see what happens. All righty, armed. Oh. So yeah, obviously that didn't work very well. The plane definitely flew like it was tail heavy. I also don't really trust the auto launch mode. The plane seemed to just want to yaw, which is really weird. No damage, let's go. All right, let's try that again. I guess definitely tail heavy. <laughs> so the only thing I could do to try to fix this balance is to add a bigger battery in the front. This will increase the overall weight of the plane, but hopefully make the balance more sufficient for flying. Still not good, but it's definitely better. All right, here we go. <laughs> Take three. Well, she might be gone. <laughs> and this time it did fly better, even though the balance was still way off. But this thing was definitely impossible to control. I was holding full left aileron and rudder, but the plane kept on yawing to the right. And trust me, I did double check that the control surfaces are moving in the right direction. Oh, it's up in the tree. I'm coming for you. Oh no, the wing. There's a stick in the wind. That gets back to the drawing board on this guy. <laughs> One of the tails snapped off, which that's an easy fix. But more importantly, this wing is a, a little, little cooked. Look at that. Now I was determined not to let this stop me. I mean, every new plane design has at least three major crashes, right? At least that's what I'm gonna tell myself. To fix the balance issue, I cut off the wings and then shifted them back by about an inch and a quarter. I also reprinted the V-tail section that broke and installed that in the plane. And with that, this plane's ready for another test. Alrighty, another day, another test. I moved the wings back about an inch and a quarter, so hopefully that helps with the CG problem. So yeah, let's do this and see what happens. Oh, Yeah, so oh. as you can tell by my reaction, this was a pretty tough crash. I think this plane's done, guys. <laughs> I think this plane's done. Good luck. Oh. 
Oh. All right, here's the rest of it. Sheesh. And to be honest, I was initially planning on cutting off the video here because I was just having so many issues with this plane. However, I decided that's not the right attitude. The only thing it cost me to keep trying is just a little bit of my sanity. So I went back home and cut out brand new wings, which are larger and have built-in dihedral, which should give it more stability. And redoing things for the third time is no reason to have stuff look bad, so I gave it a quick paint job. While the paint dried, I cut off the old wings, as well as a good bit of the fuselage, so that I could glue everything together. And with that, we can one more time go test this thing. Alrighty, let's see what we can do here. Third time's the charm. Alright, let's check the CG. I'm gonna say that's good enough. Alright, let's do it. Nope. Now this crash was my fault. Actually, well, I guess they're all my fault. But I was trying to fly this on a three cell battery and I had the throttle way too low. Luckily, only the tip of the wing broke off, so I can tape that back on and we should be good to go for another try. I swear this is really getting old at this point. That thing was flying, and then the wings just went, whoop, folded. <laughs> it was flying right up through here, and then just wings absolutely folded. Yep, that's that's about all she wrote. <laughs> Dude, what? It just broke. The whole wing came off. It wasn't even my tape that broke. The whole wing broke. Now, this was definitely the closest it had come to flying, but at this point, I was really tired of rebuilding this thing. I did quickly try to hot glue it and then refly it, but this is how that went. So yeah, I'm declaring defeat on this project. I'm still not quite sure why this plane flew so bad. I think a lot of the issues came from the fact that I was hand launching every time. So for the next plane I build, I'll definitely look into building some sort of launching system or build it big enough that I can put landing gear on it and take off on the grass. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Maybe I'm just missing something of why this is such a bad plane. But that's all for this project. So subscribe for more and I'll see you guys in the next one.